Russia-Ukraine War Latest News Russia will accept asylum seekers seeking to reject Western liberal values. Russia said it will support people fleeing neoliberal policies that counter to traditional Russian spiritual and moral values in their nations. President Vladimir Putin signed an order allowing foreigners to apply for temporary residence in Russia outside the quota established by the Russian government and without giving documentation demonstrating their grasp of the Russian language, Russian history and basic laws. Candidates may oppose their country policies aimed at imposing damaging neoliberal ideas on people, which run opposite to traditional Russian spiritual and moral values. Russia's state policy on immigration, homosexuality, and gender flexibility includes these ideals. Putin told the Financial Times in 2019 that German Chancellor Angela Merkel had made a fatal error by liberalizing Middle Eastern immigration. Liberalism assumes nothing needs to come. In order to safeguard their rights, migrants can kill, loot, and rape without consequence. What rights? Putin remarked in the interview that every crime deserves punishment. He added that Russia is not homophobic but that Western acceptance of homosexuality and gender flexibility looked excessive. He stated, traditional values are more stable and more significant for millions of people than this liberal ideology, which, in my opinion, is truly ceasing to exist. On August 16, former British Prime Minister Boris Johnson encouraged the US and UK to let Ukraine attack Russia with atoms and storm shadow missiles. The US enabled Ukraine to fire Hamars, GMLRS, and artillery on Russian territory near the Ukrainian border in May. However, the US and UK prevent Ukraine from employing Adams and Storm shadow missiles to strike deeper into Russia. He wrote in the Daily Mail that the only way to halt the glide bombs is to strike the air bases used by those Russian planes, and the only way to hit those sites is to use the Western kit they already have. Why don't we? Why don't we let them hit Russian military sites? After all, the Russians have killed civilians in Ukrainian cities and military bases for almost two years. Johnson said it was the British challengers that broke the taboo on sending tanks to Ukraine and it was the British decision to give the NLAW anti-tank missiles that inspired other European governments to give their own lethal armament. He urged British Prime Minister Keir Starmer to quit pussyfooting around. Now is the time for the UK to do the same again, show leadership, show initiative on Storm Shadow, and our friends and allies will follow, he said. When Volodymyr Zelensky traveled to Britain last month, he was confused to be told by Keir Starmer that he could employ Storm Shadow against Russian bases, only for that clearance to be revoked a few days later. The Telegraph reported on August 13 that an unnamed British government source told the UK government that Ukraine could not employ Storm Shadow long-range missiles in its foray into Korsk Oblast. Sources told The Times on August 16 that the UK government had sought the US over a month ago for authorization for Ukraine to use British Storm Shadow missiles within Russia but has not received a good response. Johnson also hailed Ukraine's Korsk Oblast incursion. Over two years ago, Russian tyrant Vladimir Putin launched his terrible and illegitimate assault, believing the Ukrainians would fold like napkins, he stated. He believed his armor columns might overthrow Kiev in days. In his darkest dreams, he never imagined Ukrainian tanks crossing into Russia or capturing more area in a week, more than 1,000 square kilometers, than the Russians in a year. Johnson stated that from the beginning we have constantly underestimated the Ukrainians. We have misjudged their courage, their determination to undertake what many thought impossible, he remarked. We've chronically overestimated Ukrainians' rage at the Russian invader and their desire to oust Putin's forces from every inch of Ukraine. 